Good morning. Today is Tuesday. It's the fourth day of Menachem Av. We continue in Yigeres HaKadosh. And that we started yesterday. The Alta Rebbe talks about, in there's a different letters the Alta Rebbe wrote to Hasidim and many of those subjects and the, um, they explain, they are explained in the Tanya, and those the children of the Alta Rebbe added it to the Tanya. So yesterday, we spoke about the concept of the Emunah, the faith, which is stabilizing, and stabilizing the intellect and the emotions, meaning, al Rebbe quoted the verse that we say by Aishas Chayil, that King Solomon says, Chagra ne'er, that she girdled her loins with strength and strengthened her arms. And we explained what is the loins, the part of the body that supports, supports the head and allows the person also to walk, to go where he needs to go. So this, we explained, refers to the emuna, the faith. Now the faith that we have in Hashem gives us stability to the intellect, our understanding, because when you base everything on the intellect, it may, may be very unstable. One day you understand one way, another day you understand something else. And as a result also it affects the emotions, the kindness, the, uh, explain the, the arms are, the right arm represents the chesed, the kindness, the left arm represents the gvura, the strictness. So <clears throat> kindness also, can be used properly and can also be misdirected. Can be used kindness in a, in a wrong way. You're letting your child <clears throat> watching television all night. It's in a way it's an act of kindness, but it's, it's really not kindness. So in order to strengthen, to stabilize the intellect and the emotions, this is the emuna. This is the faith. This is the mosnaim. This is the loins that stabilizes and gives strength and uh, directs it in the right way. However, the Alter Rebbe goes on and says, the verse says, Chag that the loins was girdled with strength. Meaning the Amuna itself needs strength. You need to strengthen your Amuna. How does it work? How is it done? And this Dal Rebbe goes to explain today in today's Shia that this is done through studying the Torah Shebaal Peh, the oral Torah, particularly the halachas, the laws. And the Alter Rebbe leads in that this is the main time to focus on this is during the morning prayer. So why is it that the halachas and the oral Torah, the oral law is what gives strength to the emunah? So the Alter Rebbe is going to explain because this is the ultimate will of Hashem. When you study the Torah, when you study the written law, from the written law you cannot derive exactly what Hashem wants. You know, the written law, the, the Torah, if you read it, it's read like 
like a narrative relating a story, what happened, Hashem said to Moses, Moses says to the people, they did to this, to that, but it doesn't go down to details. Bottom line, what does Hashem want? To do that, for example, putting on tefillin. What does it say, what does, what does it, uh, it say in the Torah? Tie it as a sign on your hand. There should be like a sign between your eyes. And what does it mean? It doesn't say what to tie, how to tie, what color to tie, what shape. It doesn't say anything. You need the oral Torah. So when you sit and you study the oral Torah, specifically halacha, you connect with the very essence of the will of Hashem. And when we're talking about the will of God, we call it Ratzayna Elyon. What does it mean, Ratzayna Elyon? The higher will, supreme will. You would think that the higher will represents the will of someone who is I, which means God. But it's more than that. It also, Ratzayna Elyon means the ultimate will. There is Sometimes there is a will that comes as a result of understanding something. I understand one thing, so I want this. There is a deeper will that is very rooted within the soul that is beyond understanding. I want it because I want it. And because I want it, I want you to understand what I want. This is when we're talking about the ultimate, the Ratzin Elyon, the ultimate will of Hashem. And this is what is, when you study Allah, you're studying the ultimate will of Hashem. So let's look inside how the Alter Rebbe says in today's shir. Says the Alter Rebbe. Ach mi hu anuisen koyach v'oiz lebchinas masnai. But what gives the power and strength to the loins, meaning the faith, to support and sustain the head, meaning the intellect that contemplates God's greatness, and the arms, meaning the love and fear of God, what gives strength to, to this emunah? It is one's involvement in and study of the laws of the oral Torah. For the Torah is the food that nourishes the soul's faith. And the oral Torah is the manifestation of the supreme will. And to explain the supreme will, this is the ultimate will of Hashem, which is beyond understanding. And al Rebbe goes on to explain, the nafkas. Torah merely proceeds, meaning it unfolds from Chachma. It is merely revealed through the divine wisdom. Divine wisdom, obviously, we're talking about, uh, we explained early in the time, yeah, Hashem and his Chachma is one, which is much, much higher than, than, than the wisdom of human. But yet, when you go deeper, you go the Ratzin of Hashem, the ultimate will of Hashem, <clears throat> is, is certainly higher than the level of Chachma of Hashem. So the Torah comes out from Chachma. Its source and root, however, surpasses by far the rank of Chachma, of wisdom. Being that which is referred to as the bless, blessed one's supreme will, which encompasses and sustains Chachma. <clears throat> Thus it is written. The following proof text is cited here to illustrate the effect of the Torah upon the soul. So it says, 
as with a shield, your crown, you, you crown the righteous man with favor. Now the word favor here is in Hebrew is ratzain. But the word ratzain also means will. So that means, as I said through the Taylor study, the study of the Torah encompasses and protects the soul of the Torah student. Like a crown which is, pla- which is placed above the brains which are within the head. So what does it mean? What is he saying? That, like the crown. What is in the ruts and he refers to as the crown. What is a crown? A crown sits on the head. There's something else that sits on the head. I'm, I'm just I'm wearing now a hat that also sits on the head. What's the difference between a hat and a crown? The difference is the hat, the hat serves the head. You want to be warm, you want to have a cover, it serves the head. So, so which one is higher? The head is higher. The head serves the head. A crown is something else. A crown beautifies the person. It brings the person, it brings the head to a, to a, to a higher level. It brings the person, is crown, the crown on the, on the head is to elevate the person to the level of a king. So, so here, the Ratzin, the will of Hashem, serves as the crown, which is higher than the Chachma. This teaching parallels the familiar exposition of the verse, a woman of valor is the crown of her husband. So this concept that is serves as a higher level to elevate, the same thing is true. That's what we say to Ashes Chayel, the woman of valor. We say it every Friday night. So it's the feminine aspect in everything. The same thing, the oral Torah is also refers to the Ashes Chayel. This teaching, likewise, recalls the rabbinic teaching that whoever studies the, the Torah laws every day is assured, is assured of a life in the world to come. This then is the meaning of the verse, she girds her loins with strength. There is no strength by Torah. For it gives the power and strength to the loins, meaning the faith of the soul, which are girded and embodied in it. So this is to strengthen what? To strengthen and fortify its arms. What is the arms? This is the intellectually generated or in, innate awe and love. You have two types of awe and two types of love. There is one that is generated intellectually, which is a higher level. When you understand something to the point that leads you to develop emotions towards it, or there is the innate love, the natural love that there is inside. <laughs> In each man according to his measure. And that that is the strengthening of the of the the, the arms, the emotions. That is referred to in the in the words chagra be'oizm masnea vateametz zroyeser. She strengthened the, the arms. The arms, as we said, is the right and the left arm, the chesed and the gevura. Where do we see in the verse that it also it strengthens the logic, the brain, the intellect? So that's what Dalt Rebbe continues here. Vala modas ve'kiyum bechinas aroisha benefesh. 
Omar Tomo Kitev Sachro Hulu Mevu Mokemach. As regard supporting and sustaining the head of the soul, meaning the intellect that contemplates, Solomon said, she perceives that her trade is good. So this is a metaphor which is explained elsewhere, but the point here is when you're saying that she perceives that it's good, how does one perceive that it's good? This is the concept of the intellectual understanding. So that is a continuation of that verse that we have the emuna, we have the faith, which is the loins, that stabilizes and supports both the intellect and the emotions, and that itself needs strength. The emuna, the faith itself needs strength, and that is the studying of the Torah, the oral law, and specifically the halachas, learning the laws of the Torah, the practical laws. But now the Alter Rebbe takes it further and explains that this is the focus of when is it a good time and a good occasion to strengthen this is the time of the morning prayer. However, the occasion and time for the strengthening and fortification of the arms, meaning the spiritual emotions, and the head, which is the intellect, is when? This is the time of the morning prayer. For above, that is a time of compassion, a time at which, at which the supreme will is revealed. And Alta Rebbe goes on and says, Therefore, says the Alta Rebbe, this is what I would ask of those who seek to draw close to God. Let them both understand and contemplate. And have a constant reminder between your eyes. All that I wrote them last year in general, and again, this is this part what Al Rebbe wrote them, he said last year, this is the last part printed in the Tanya. Because as we explained yesterday, the letters of the Alter Rebbe here are not printed chronologically. But the Alter Rebbe wrote the year before, was printed later in the Tanya, about the importance of the prayer with kavana, with the proper intent, and so on. And especially with respect to devout concentration during prayer, from the depth of the heart. Day after day, let them seek God and desire to cleave to him with all their heart and with all their soul. Let them pour out their soul like water in prayer in the presence of God. In the spirit, our sages of blessed memory taught in Sifri, commenting upon the verse, and with all your soul, that the prayer should be intense to the extent of pressing out the soul, meaning until the soul bursts forth and expresses itself in an outpouring of love for God. So this is the end of today's shir, giving us, again, an understanding of what strengthens the emuna, what strengthens our emuna, is literally studying the Torah, specifically Torah Shabbat, the oral Torah, even more specifically, to study the halacha, which is the will of Hashem. When we study this, this gives us strengthens our amana, study the Gemara, and so on. 
and also focusing on the morning prayer. Focusing on the morning prayer, which is the beginning of the day, and to really pay attention on a daily basis, and that will strengthen our amuna. Thank you so much for joining, and any questions we can take now.